Hi families, welcome to third grade. I am Mrs. Jockel, your child's third grade teacher for this year. I just wanted to create this short little video to review some third grade rules and expectations and go over um, some of the things you can expect to see this year as far as tests and homework and that kind of thing. Um, first though, I will share a little bit about myself. I am starting my 13th year of teaching. It's kind of hard to believe that I've been teaching that long, um, but I've been teaching third grade for 12 of those years, and I taught one grade in fourth grade, all of which occurred at Mercer Elementary. I graduated from Westminster College, and I played soccer through college, so I'm a big soccer fan. I also love hockey and football, especially watching our Steelers and Pittsburgh Penguins play. I have been married for 10 years and I have two children, Noah, who is in third grade, and a daughter, Sadie, who is in first grade. However, we live in the Butler School District, so they do not go to Mercer. All right, so let's get to some of the things you may be questioning. You should have received a third grade handbook last week, and inside that handbook, it talked about some things to expect for third grade. One thing I want to make sure I touch base on is the homework, because the homework um, policy for this year, or the way I do homework, may be different than what you are used to in past years. I have been doing homework packets for the last few years, and I find that families really enjoy having a packet of homework sent home on Friday, and then they have the entire week to work on that homework packet. So every Friday, I will send home a packet that is attached to my Jockles Journal newsletter, which goes over lots of important events and upcoming tests and things like that. But the homework packet will be due the following Friday. So it will include work that we will cover the following week of school. However, you can get started in that homework packet the Friday your child brings it home or even over the weekend. This is important because maybe you have a busy week ahead, you have baseball practice, or you have um, a birthday you're celebrating, so you're going out to eat. Whatever it may be, I know everyone has a busy schedule and sometimes the hours in the evening go very quickly, especially if you have other things going on. So you can kind of create a schedule that works for you as to when to get your child to do their homework. If you know you're going to be very busy on a Wednesday evening, maybe you do a couple extra pages Tuesday night and then really just focus on maybe reading on Wednesday, or practicing spelling words. Um, it takes the kids a little bit of time to kind of get in the routine of what works best for them um, because sometimes they think, wow, I don't have homework tonight or Mrs. Jockel didn't give me a math page tonight. But they forget they have that homework packet that they should be working in bit by bit. I've had some students that work really hard over the weekend, get their whole packet done, and then they just focus on reading each night and um, practicing spelling or math facts. Whatever works for you works for me. Homework is just due by that following Friday. If homework is incomplete, your child will not lose recess to complete it. However, they may have to take some of their free time or time um, from a fun activity to work on some of the important concepts from their homework packet. Sometimes you'll see a paper come home labeled EE, and that means extra effort. That is not homework. It is an optional um, page to do. Maybe we didn't get to it in class or we didn't get to finish it. And then your child, if they complete the extra effort, would get a, a ticket to put in for our prize drawings. If you ever need help with your child's homework or have questions, please feel free to you know, email me or write a note the next day, but you can always send me a message on Remind and that will come directly to my phone like a text message 
And I will be more than happy to try to get back with you that evening um, to answer your question right away. So don't feel bad to message me on Remind in the evening if you have an important question about homework. Um, the students will sometimes have time in class to work on their homework if they finish their morning work early or during some downtime. So it's important to keep their homework in their Mustang Pride folder on the Bring Back to School side. As far as food and drinks, um, students are allowed to have a water bottle. In fact, it's highly encouraged that they bring a water bottle. Um, we are not doing a snack time this year in my classroom. And so it's important that they eat a good breakfast in the morning, whether at home or at school. They um, are able to fill up their water bottles throughout the day, but make sure that it is just water that you're sending to school with your child. Unfortunately, this year too, um, we are not allowed to um, pass out birthday treats from students on their birthday. However, teachers, as long as we have these items in our classroom, so they've been quarantined, I guess, um, I'm allowed to hand out like a Gatorade and a bag of chips for the students when it's their birthday. Um, so I will do that just to help make them feel a little extra special on their birthday. And it's just important that your child is aware not to share food at lunch um, because a lot of friends do have allergies. And especially this year, we're trying to keep our things to ourselves. Um, attendance, you probably know about. If your child is absent, please send an excuse note to school indicating why they were absent. You have five days to turn that in before it's marked unexcused. And if you would like me to send homework or the, the missed work home with your um, sibling of your child or with a neighbor or a friend or anyone, um, please let me know either through an email or remind, or you can also tell the office that if you are calling in your child sick. That way your child won't get too far behind. And I usually just try to send home what, what's most important for them to make up from the day. And um, if your child does miss a day of school, they get one day per however many days they were absent to make up their work. So if they were absent one day, they would get one day to complete their missed work. SMART stands for spend minutes and read today. Um, this is part of the homework packet. It is the reading log. Students are expected to read um, four nights a week, typically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For third grade, I just ask that they read for 10 minutes every night, um, and then that should get marked in on their homework packet. A parent or guardian should be signing in that packet um, each night to indicate that your child did read. They can read independently now that they're in third grade, but they also can read with you or you can read to them. They can read to a younger brother or sibling. Um, so you can change the way reading is done a little bit so it's not always just them reading um, out loud to you. But make sure that they are changing the books that they are reading and not always reading picture books. In third grade, most students are getting to the point where they are reading chapter books like Magic Treehouse, Junie B. Jones, Owl Diaries, even Diary of a Wimpy Kid or Dog Man, those graphic novels the boys really seem to get into. If you have any questions about what your child should be reading, um, just let me know. I will be doing some reading assessments with the children in the next couple of weeks to kind of really get a good idea of what level they are reading at. On the next page, it talked about reading. We use the curriculum from Harcourt. Um, it's called Storytown. Um, Storytown is set up that there are two skills each week that we will focus on. For instance, this week is characters and setting as well as ABC order. And um, there's vocabulary words that go along with each story and a weekly test. However, we do not test every single week because we found we were doing a lot of testing and it took up time from us teaching. So the skills repeat for two weeks in a row. So for instance, we're doing lesson one this week. We will not take a graded test. Next week, we'll do lesson two, practice the same skills, a different story and different vocabulary, but then we will test lesson two. And then lesson three, we introduce the skills and a story with vocabulary. 
Lesson four will be a different story, different vocabulary words, but the same skills as week three, and we will test that fourth lesson. So it almost is like every other lesson, the students will be assessed for reading. Spelling and grammar, though, are separate. There will be weekly tests for spelling and grammar. Spelling words will always be in your child's homework packet, and we practice those words in class, but it's very important to practice them at home too. Um, maybe do an assessment with your child at the beginning of the week and only practice the words that they are struggling with instead of practicing all of them. Going into spelling now, um, in third grade, there are 20 spelling words, 15 plus five challenge words. Uh, I know the students are used to only 15 words from second grade. So for the first five lessons, I'm only going to grade the first 15 words of their spelling list. I will still introduce those five challenge words and they are welcome to continue practicing those words. And I will even ask them those words on their test. However, I will only grade the first 15 words. And that's just through the first five lessons to kind of ease the kids back into school and taking tests and to get them used to having those five extra words. So after lesson five, they will be graded on all 20 spelling words. Math facts, we spend uh, the first month or so practicing um, our addition facts. Um, and then we move into about a month of subtraction. And then the majority of our year is spent on multiplication. And then we usually are able to get into our division facts by the end of third grade. Math facts are always a struggle sometimes, especially because we take timed tests. And this year, the students have 50 problems to complete within three minutes. Um, for addition, I will keep one test of their best grade. We'll probably take two or three tests, and then whichever is their best score, that's what I'll keep for their grade. <coughs> Sorry, that's my dog, Coda. Um, same thing with subtraction. And then you can see the breakdown with multiplication. We don't just throw all 100 multiplication facts on the students. We break it down into the zero through threes facts, then the zero to fives, and so on. Um, it's important that your child is practicing math facts at home. Um, we do practice in class, but sometimes math fluency is better built with repetition. And so it's important to practice those facts, um, get some flashcards from the dollar store, or if you need some flashcards, I can send home some paper ones. Just let me know and I'd be glad to do that. The majority of our math curriculum comes from Go Math, which your child should be familiar with from last year. Um, there is a website that you can use to access our Go Math materials and maybe do extra practice, um, that kind of thing. Um, it tells you their username and password are both your child's school ID number, which most children I think have memorized by this point. I do have those logins um, numbers if you need them though. However, the first three chapters we decided this year to um, kind of ease into Go Math. So we are teaching the first three chapters from our old math series that we used, um, Houghton Mifflin Math. And so we won't be using Go Math until um, those first three chapters are taught. Those first three chapters cover place value. Um, comparing and ordering numbers, rounding numbers, and um, counting money. Um, because we lost a lot of school in the spring, we're trying to ease back into things and catch up on some of the content that was missed. Um, if your child goes to another teacher for their math and reading curriculum, uh, Mrs. Kostelnik is our math, or I'm sorry, Mrs. Kostelnik is our reading teacher for learning support. And um, Mrs. Ingley is our math learning support teacher. So if your child sees one of those teachers or both of them for their core math and or reading curriculum, um, they would receive their homework from those teachers directly. Um, oftentimes those children have an individualized education plan and so their um, work is tailored a little bit more to their needs and they may have different spelling words than the ones I'm sending home. Um, they may pra be practicing different math facts or in a different um, part of the chapter. 
If you ever have any questions about what work your child should be completing or what homework they have, please reach out to me. Um, I think I sent out a remind message already, but I know some parents um, did not respond back yet. So I will be sending out some more remind messages. Remind is just a communication tool that I use. You do not have to download the app, at least I don't think so. I think as long as you accept my invitation, um, you'll receive my messages. And it comes to you just like a text message, and then you are able to reply back to me, and it comes to me like a text message as well. And when you reply back to me, only I see that message. So if I send out a group ma uh, message, you can reply to that, and it'll only come to me, not to everybody in the group. So that's kind of nice for um, talking one-on-one -on -one and getting some quick feedback. I know I've already communicated with a few parents that way who had questions about things, and it's just a nice tool to be able to talk back and forth, be on the same page, and um, I can help answer any questions you have. Um, I know this year is going to be a little bit different, but we are in this together. I'm so proud of the kids so far for how well they are doing, easing back into school. It's amazing to see how excited they are to be back. Um, even though they are spread out from their friends, they still get that feeling of um, togetherness, being at school, and having, having fun learning again. And so I hope things continue in this manner. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions about anything throughout the year, or if you have any concerns, or um, if you need anything from me, extra support or um, things of that nature. I'm trying to think if I wanted to say anything else. Oh yes, I will be sending out soon um, some information about conferences. Um, so be thinking about you know um, a time that would work best for us to get together. Uh, I'd like to try to do some of these through a Zoom meeting so we can do virtual conferences, but I'm also able to meet with you in person as well. And so I will be sending out a schedule for you to kind of let me know what days and times work best for you. And that way we can get together and talk more one on one about your child and anything um, that pertains to their learning this year. I look forward to working with you all this year. You have wonderful children. They are very pleasant to have in class. They make my job a lot of fun. So I thank you for your support. I thank you for your time. And I hope to, to meet you guys soon. Bye. Maybe I will end this video.